Let's take a deep dive into Elton John's songwriting process together and let's see what it is that he did that we can take away as songwriters to improve our songwriting and write better songs that captivate millions of people all around the world. Hey now, my name is Danny Boyle, I'm the founder of Songwriters International. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing for this channel somewhere around this video. We've also put together a completely free training where I walk you through my entire two-step songwriting process to writing songs that captivate listeners that you can then monetize and pitch to global artists. So that is linked in the description for you. But let's look at Elton John's songwriting process. What is it that he actually done so well? And what are some of the key takeaways that we can take away from that process? Process to ultimately write better songs. So let's first of all have a look at the collaboration aspect of songwriting. This was the key backbone of all Elton John's songs with another songwriter called Bernie Taupin and those two were absolutely incredible. They wrote some of the greatest songs that are on this planet right now for us to listen to. But the way that they wrote songs together was incredibly unconventional to what we would typically see for most songwriters. What they used to do is Bernie Taupin would write a set of lyrics. He might write 10, 20 or 30 sets of lyrics, then present them to Elton John who would then go to his piano. He would go and create melody for these songs. And to quote Elton John with one of the things he said, he was going into the studio one day and Bernie Taupin had presented to him 24 sets of lyrics. So folders worth of lyrics that he would just go through and just play out and see if anything came in that moment. But as I mentioned before, the way that they would collaborate, Bernie and Elton John, was highly unconventional. Even in Elton John's words, he said it was strange because what they did for over 50 years is Bernie would create the lyrics, as I've mentioned, and then Elton John would go away separately, not together, and create the melody and the piano parts for the songs. Where in most sessions we find ourselves in today, especially from my point of view, you will write with the person live, in person, or on an online platform, such as, let's say, Zoom or Skype or something similar, where you would write that song together. And that is a great way to collaborate. So whilst Elton John does it highly unconventional, even in his own words, says not many people do it this way, he didn't know anyone who'd done it like this. I would suggest getting into the collaboration process, but in a live environment, because it's gonna help you on a couple points. Number one, you're gonna see someone else work live. You're gonna see how they create lyrics or melodies. You're gonna be able to see what they actually do, so you can take away some aspects of that. Secondly, when you're writing with someone else and you put forward an idea, they can stop you. They can say, well, hold on. Let's look at the lyric. Let's maybe make it a little bit stronger so that you're not writing on your own. Because a lot of the time when we write on our own, we've got no one else to bounce the idea off to see if it's really good enough or could be made that little bit stronger. So I would highly encourage collaboration. I want you to take away that, that collaboration is key, but I would recommend for you to collaborate with someone in person and get that feel for working with someone live. What I also found diving into Elton John's songwriting process specifically is that he would dispose of a song incredibly quickly if he didn't feel that instant excitement, that initial spark for the song. He would typically in the first 10, 20 or 30 minutes either ditch the song, throw it away because he just didn't get that spark or he would then continue and build on that track. So I want you to take away that initial excitement that you should feel for that song. As soon as you create that melody, that lyric, it should create a little bit of excitement in, for, in, in wood for you to go, hold on, I really want to build on this song. Because if you don't have that, you're just gonna be pushing against the wind quite literally when you're writing that song. You're gonna be pushing a song that you don't really feel the energy for, then it's gonna showcase in the song that you write. Don't force the song if you don't feel that excitement. Go and build a song if you feel that initial spark and you feel something is there. And if not, go ahead and, and create something new. Try a new lyric, try a new title, just in the same way that Elton John did. He would have, let's say, 24 sets of lyrics as the example. He'd go through the first one, see if that initial excitement was there. If not, he would go straight onto the next one and see where the excitement lied, see what it was that got his juices flowing. And you don't just have to do this the way that Elton did with sets of lyrics. You could try it with song titles. Take a song title and sing it out and see if it really you know, gets that excitement going or try a set of lyrics or try a melody or maybe a music production or a set of chords. Whatever it is for you, take those practices and those concepts of what it is that Elton John did at determining whether this song has legs, whether it's worth exploring in those first 
10, 20 or 30 minutes because then if it does feel worthwhile then you'll find that the song at the end is probably going to be far better because you feel invested and you're enjoying it far more than if you were just forcing the song because you feel that you need to finish it. Now also looking through Elton John's process with Bernie, I found that Elton John found melody far more important than he did story which is interesting and that's the balance as a songwriter and this is something that I would encourage you to take away from this video is that you should when you're writing the song determine really what type of song you have do you have a very story driven song that you want to really emphasize that story through the lyric it's like really important that, that this story really hits home or is your melody more important to you is the hook really important is it about it being catchy is it about having an audience singing back this simple part of your song that is incredibly simple lyrically but incredibly catchy melodically and you've got to have that balance and that's where at the start of the songwriting process when you sit down you determine what you feel this song is going to be about is it about the story or is it more about the melody because Elton John when he was songwriting especially with this was far more focused on the melody than he was the story and what I also found incredibly interesting to back this point up is that Bernie said when he presented the lyrics to Elton Elton would go and write the melody and then in some cases six months later Elton would come back around and say hey you know that song that we wrote a few months back I finally know what it's about it's about this and it's talking about that and it goes to show that in that moment where Elton was crafting the melody, he didn't really know what the story was about and he didn't really care. He wasn't tweaking the lyric. It was all about solidifying a great hook on top of a set of lyrics that he had been presented because his strong point wasn't lyrics. It wasn't the story. It was all about creating hooks. If you don't already know by now, but hooks are what catches the listener's ear. It's what entices them into the song. The hooks are typically in the chorus. It's that part of the song where it's simple. Lyrically, it says very simple things and it's all about enticing that listener in with a great melodic hook. And to give some examples of this in Elton John's song, we've got two examples. We've got I'm Still Standing and Crocodile Rock. So if we look at I'm Still Standing, it's very simple in that chorus or post-chorus area and it says, I'm still standing, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still standing, yeah, yeah, yeah. It doesn't really tell as much, and it's very simple. I'm still standing, and then three yeses. If we look at Crocodile Rock, it's just got a very simple hook, which is the la, 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 and it doesn't tell us any story but it's great melodically, it feels catchy, it entices those listeners in. And that's how you can create something that's super, super simple. Just some O's, yes, las, buzz, das, whatever it is. That doesn't really make any sense, but sounds incredibly catchy when you get the right melody. So some key things that I want you to take away from this is number one, collaboration is key. Collaboration is the backbone of great songwriting and growth as a songwriter. I would suggest you to write with the songwriter live in person though. I wouldn't necessarily go with Bernie and Elton's process of one person writes lyrics, the other one creates melody, and they never really get together to craft the song. I would personally suggest to get in that collaboration community straight away with somebody live in person. Maybe as you go in years, as years follow, then maybe you can get uh, that relationship built with somebody. But at the initial stages, get live in person with somebody. Secondly, get the emotion, get the feel for your song, whether you actually want to go with it. See if you get that initial spark and that excitement, because if it doesn't excite you to want to write the song in those first 5, 10, 20 minutes, then the song is typically not really worth pursuing. So don't pursue the song for the sake of pursuing it. Only pursue it if it feels valuable to you, like it's going to be valuable for the time that you commit and you feel like you're actually going to get something out of it. And finally, number three, is focus where you can on one or the other. Lyrics, story, or melody and hooks. Because most songs typically have one or the other, or one outweighs the other. So you either have a great story and focus all your attention on that or focus more towards the hook. In Elton's case, he was very hook driven, melodic driven. So pick yours, pick your route and then go about crafting that and getting it 
down. So if you've enjoyed the video with me today, don't forget, like I say, to drop us a subscribe on this channel. We've also got a completely free training below in the description where I walk you through my entire two-step songwriting process to how to monetize and pitch your songs to global artists so you can register for that below. And also, if you want, please feel free to drop in the comments for any other videos that you'd like to see. I've been Danny Boyle here from Songwriters International, and I'll see you over on another video.